Hi everyone, it's Joy from Artful Homemaking. Today I'm going to share with you how to knit grandmother's favorite dishcloth knitting pattern. So eight years ago I shared a free knitting pattern on my blog and it was this classic grandmother's favorite dishcloth pattern. I've made so many of these for the years. I've made them for gifts, I've made them for our own personal use, and it's been one of the most visited posts on my blog for the past eight years. So from time to time I receive questions about how to knit grandmother's favorite dishcloth, you know, technique questions. It's a really simple pattern, it's great for beginners, but sometimes people want just a little more help or sometimes there's a beginner who doesn't have someone to teach them. So I thought it was high time after eight years that I make my own video showing you how to knit this dishcloth pattern. So today I'm just going to start one of these from the very beginning and walk you through the steps in case you need to see someone do it. These and all the ones I've made before have been made using this long pair of size 9 knitting needles. And the only reason was that these are the very first knitting needles I ever bought and they were just what I had and so I just kept using them. They are pretty long for a dishcloth so you know you've, you're kind of using these really long needles. You can use 6 to a 9 would work fine. I've been using 9 but today I'm going to be using some size 7s that I picked up and these are wood. They're still kind of long, not quite as long as these. So anyway, you can also use a circular needle if you like, but I'm going to be using these size 7. Um, it's a US 7 needles. And I'm using Lay Sugar and Cream yarn, and I'm using white just because I like the classic look of the white, but you can use any color that you'd like. So I'm going to bring the camera in closer so you can see what I'm doing up close. So first you're going to create a slip knot and I do that by wrapping it around my fingers and then I pull up this loop and you just pull it through there and it creates this little knot. Then you're going to put it on your needle and you're going to tighten it up on the needle and you're going to cast on four stitches. I do it this way. Then you're going to knit four. So you turn your needles around. So then you have four stitches on the needle. Then you're going to knit two. Yarn over and then knit to the end of the row. turn it over again and then you're going to repeat row two until you have 45 stitches on the needle. So you're going to knit two, yarn over, knit to the end of the row.
turn it around and you're just going to do the same thing. Okay, so once you have 45 stitches on your needle, then you're going to start row three. And row three. Is knit one. Knit two together. yarn over, knit two together, this gets a little bit tight, and then knit to the end of the row. I'm trying to work around my tripod here, so I'm kind of having to reach around it a little bit, but hopefully you can see. Okay, now you have five stitches on the needle. So now you're going to go to row four. You're going to knit two. Knit two together. And I knit, I'm a very tight knitter, so it's kind of hard to get these off. And then knit one. And now you've got four stitches left on the needle. So now what you're going to do is bind off the four stitches. So to do that, you're going to knit one. one and then you're going to take your left needle and pull that stitch off of there and then you're going to knit the next one this gets kind of tight and I'm trying to wrap my arm around my <coughs> um, tripod so I'm having kind of a hard time reaching it so in order to bind off so you've got these two stitches here you're going to grab this one 
and you're then going to pull your needle through that right there. And for your last one, you're going to knit that one. And then you're, you've just got two left on the needle, so you're going to put your left needle in here and pull that stitch off. So you're left with a loop, so I just kind of pull the loop up and leave about uh, just a little tail of about six inches, and then you're going to cut it off. And then I just put the, the thread in through this loop. and pull it and it makes a little knot. So now you're done with your dishcloth. Now, I left this one a little long so I'm just gonna trim it. So now what you're going to do is you're just gonna thread, they don't need to be terribly long, but you're just gonna take your yarn needle and thread this little end piece on here. And then you're just going to thread this through some of the stitches that you did. I just kind of like to go, there may be a better way to do this, but I just kind of randomly thread it through and try to make it as inconspicuous as possible. and then cut off any extra that you have. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the other end that you have here. I'm just gonna go through some of these stitches on the edge. And that kind of helps that. So there you have your dishcloth. And if you want it to be a more perfect swear, you can block it. And you can just do a Google search on blocking knitting. I don't worry about it because it's just a dishcloth or a washcloth and in my opinion it doesn't have to be perfect. But So there's your completed dishcloth. And this one again was made with size 7 knitting needles. I usually use 9s, but I think actually I like the 7s better because it's it turned out a little bit closer and tighter. So there you go, and that's how you knit grandmother's favorite knitted dishcloth. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to knit grandmother's favorite dishcloth knitting pattern. These are so useful and they make great gifts. I love the white ones and anyway, I hope you make lots of these in the future for friends and family and for yourself. So I hope that was helpful. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe. I make new videos on creating a simple, natural, handmade home including recipes and DIY projects and just anything that would help you to find joy at home. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.